They might be dressed.
It's so amazing to see all of you, babies and hats. So definitely feel free to chat in um, the chat function. We're all gonna be able to communicate that way throughout the evening and we'll get started here in about 10 minutes. So good to see you guys. Hi everybody, it's so good to see you. For all of you without your videos on, feel free to toss them in there. We'd love to see your faces for a little bit. Just come as you are and we're gonna get started here in just a few minutes. Feel free to use the chat to talk with other people and make sure you select everyone if you want to say something to the group. Um, introduce yourselves, tell us how you are connected with POSCO or your animals names or something like that. So thanks for being here.
Mm-hmm. All right, it's go time. Are you ready to start? Yeah. Am I off? You're on. Hi. You're on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I, be too surprised. We might not get this right. I have my mask on when I started this. Hi, everybody, and welcome. Now we are we are well isolated here. And don't you love our lovely background here? This is an authentic Illinois hotel room scene that we put in there as a background. And uh, I searched all over for this particular very special background. So I'm Mike. I'm Cindy. I'm Cindy. And we have you're in our Cindy? background. No, you're, you are. <laughs> and uh, this is Brittany back there. She's also uh, actually not here. This is a, a background that I found very special online. No, she's actually here. This is our niece, Brittany, who's helping out. So our fancy cups. There's nothing like drinking scotch out of a paper cup. It's just, uh, <laughs> just cheers. crazy. <laughs> but we're here. We are in the Chicago area on some family issues, but we're delighted to be here tonight for the seventh annual. It's amazing. And here we are virtually in 2020 because, of course, COVID and uh, we're all being as careful as we can. So it's easy to say, and pardon our puns, that it's been a rough year, <laughs> but tonight will be perfect. Yes. So silent auction is open and uh, don't forget to place your bids early and often because, of course, all of the proceeds tonight go help all the wonderful parts of PAWSCO that help all of our animal friends and have done that now for over seven years. Um, go to the silent auction to vote for the 12 animals also that are in our uh, PAWSCO uh, pet calendar for the 2021 year, which is promising to be such a far better year than 2020. And we want to have those beautiful furry friends on the calendar. So our uh, dogs are in there. You can vote for them. Yeah, we are a little partial there. A little bit. more on that in just a bit. Uh, so the, the auction and the pet voting goes until 730 tonight. Uh, so we have a, a great treat and you uh, we're just drinking, you know, vodka and scotch here, but we can do so much better than that. Uh, and we all can because we have a mixologist with us tonight and uh, you're going to walk us through. This is Lee from Peak Beverage, and he's going to walk us through how to make a Paloma and a margarita like a pro. So um, keep bidding all the silent auction items and, and bidding on the, the pets for the calendars. Each dollar that you give on the calendar is a a vote. And uh, so for the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to have uh, Lee, our mixologist, give us a class on creating a couple of fun drinks. So snuggle up with your pets, 
and uh, have Let's drink. Keep bidding and enjoy. And we're back to the program a little after 7 p.m. with our program. Thank you so much, Mike and Cindy. Really appreciate that great uh, introduction, and hopefully, I can live up to those uh, high expectations that you put out there for me. Uh, so, everybody, welcome. Thank you so much for participating in the Falls Co. Uh, Gala tonight. And first off, I we're going to talk about tequila and all that good stuff. But before we start into all that, I like to always start off with a cocktail first. So, um, as Mike mentioned, we're going to be making two cocktails tonight. One is going to be the Paloma. The first one we're going to make those margarita. It's a little bit more well known, and I mean, I feel like most of us out there have had a margarita at some point in time. Um, so to jump right in, I know on your guys' slides you said you could use pretty much any glass, and that is totally good to go. Uh, same with shaker tins. I'm going to be using just a normal like Boston style shaker. Um, you can use if you don't have tins at home, you can always utilize something such as like a blender bottle. Uh, mason jars actually work really, really great. Plus, once you have it in a mason jar, you don't have to uh, get through all that hassle of pouring it into a new glass because the mason jar works as that itself. Um, but to start off with the margarita, we always want to get a nice salt rim. Uh, I know you guys all got rhymes if you were participating in this class. Um, so, one easy way to make a rimmer anytime you need to put a salt rim on something is just take, take your knife, you're going to make a neat little notch cut in your line. So, it'll look something like this. And we're just going to take that notch. And go around the rim of our glass here. Also, everybody should have gotten salt uh, too. I just have mine in this just in a little deli container here. You can use even just a plain plate at home. So once we got salt on the rim, or I'm sorry, lime juice on the rim, we're going to go ahead and get a nice salt rim on there as well. Because that's one of the beauties of a margarita is that the salt really works so well in tandem with the tequila and the Cointreau and the agave and the lime juice. Uh, so now that we have that in the moment, I'm going to work with lots of shakers today. Um, we always, I always like to build in my small tin. That way I have a better idea of how much ice that is going to go in here. I know we can pretty much fill any glass as well. But you have a nice piece of ice into whatever you're using as your uh, mixing vessel, I should say. And we always like to start with our least expensive ingredients first. So we're going to start with lime juice. It's a three quarter ounce pour on that, so we're 0.75. So we'll get this tossed in here. Next, we're going to go with agave simple. This is a um, basically agave simple is your. I like using agave, especially when it comes to a margarita or any tea, any drink that's going to use tequila as a base. And I need sweetener pour basically just because the same agave that goes in here is the same agave that's going to go in here. So I figure if it grows together, we might as well use it together. We're going to use three quarters of an ounce there as well. You can make, you can pretty much buy really well done agave syrup anywhere, um, especially here in Denver. It's uh, it's an ingredient that is really, really widely used and well down here. We're going to put tequila in next, good stuff if you will. Uh, two ounces here. In this case, we're using La Gritona, which is a Reposado tequila, which we'll talk a little bit more after we get this made. Um, I see the list throughout there. What's the best tequila to use? My personal answer would be anyone you have at home, as long as it's not Cuervo. Uh, one bad thing about Cuervo Gold is that it tends to be a, what we call a miso, so it's not 100% agave. Um, whereas any other, most other tequilas out there in the market are going to be 100% agave. You really get that nice, round, notable, well, so being vegetable and herbaceous. And to make a traditional margarita, we are going to use Cointreau. Um, this is just a dry orange liqueur. Um, for this amount, we're going to, for the two ounces we have here, we're going to use three quarters of an ounce. And then if, if you're like me and you're using shakers tonight, or if you're just using a mason jar or a blender bob, get a good seal on whatever one you're using. For these, we always just like to cap the top. Turn it over, and then you're going to get good shape. So when you do this shape here, you're going to really work to break up the ice. You're going to add some water for dilution. And then you're also going to really work to emulsify the agave and the lime with the tequila and the quattro. So I like to give up a little tin count on my head, just that way I know I don't get it really diluted, but it's still going to be nice and chill. This is where a little different school of thought can come into play, though. Um, if you're using a mason jar or a mixing, bo mixing bottle, I would just recommend you dump it straight into your glass. Some people like to use a strainer 
and pour it with fresh ice. For me, if I'm drinking a margarita, I like to add some of this broken up ice chips in there. I just think it gives it a little bit softer, a little bit nicer mouthfeel. Since we've got, since I'm just gonna do what we call a dirty dog in the business, just here right in here into the salty glass. If I did my job right, it should have looked just like that. A uh, nice little space at the top. And with that, we're gonna use a line through the garnish. Uh, for me, you can use wheels, you can use wedges. I like to use a line wedge because one, I can hang it and it looks better that way in my opinion. Or I can also take and squeeze it. And sort of like this. So cheers, guys. Well, thank you for joining. Excuse me. Awesome. Um, hey, okay. would you mind? Two. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the tequila, two ounces. On the Cointreau, 0.75. And then also the agave and lime juice, going to be at 0.75. Um, with this, I like to use these in equal parts because the sweetness and the tartness are both going to kind of play off each other. And then with the Cointreau, you're going to get a little bit of an orange juice to go along the line. But now that we all have a drink in front of us, maybe we should learn a little bit about like what is tequila. Um, well, actually, first off, Tiana, do we have any questions that people have put out there on chat? Yeah. So, all right. So, Lee, um, could you... Could you repeat the um, proportions again so that we can all keep up just to make sure we have it right? Absolutely. Game simple syrup. Lime juice, 0.75 ounce. Agave simple, 0.75 ounce. Cointreau, 0.75 ounce. And then two ounces of tequila to top it off. And then um, as far as when it comes to ice, just use a good amount because honestly, at the end of the day, when you put, we want the drink to be cold, but we don't want it to be a really dead drink. That's the reason why we don't just want to go super, super hard on that shade and just really go to town on it. Because what you'll do is you'll end up with uh, a drink that ends up being really, really watered down. And especially as you like let it sit there and you kind of start working your way through it, more and more of that ice is going to literally just keep adding more and more water into your content. Is there any other questions? So the other question that we had was, what are some of the best tequilas to use um, when you're making a margarita? It kind of just depends, uh, realistically, on what the individual person's uh, preference is. For me, I usually use a lot of silver tequilas. Uh, it's just what I generally tend to prefer. Uh, there's an old joke out there about uh, people either like tequila or they have a great story why they don't. And uh, I will say I used to definitely be in that uh, good reason why I didn't drink tequila story. Uh, but more so, like, especially, I'm not a Colorado native, but since I moved to Colorado, tequila culture is so huge out here that I've really kind of found myself being a uh, late convert to the game. Uh, I tend to use silver tequilas just because I think they give off a really nice, like, really raw kind of vegetable note that doesn't really overpower the herbaceousness um, and the white pepper and some of the, like, normal notes you can get from just the natural agave itself. Um, in this case, we're using Lagartona, which is a Reposado. Uh, with that, it basically, basically Reposado just means rest. So with that, that means that it's going to rest in an oak barrel for anywhere from three months to a year. Um, and then there's other designations as well, but I think that once you get into like the Añejo and the extra Añejo, which is one to three years and then three plus years, then you can really... With that extra time spent aging, you're and you're spending money for the amount of breathing and contact that the spirits have with the wood. So you want to taste a lot of those woody notes. You want to taste a lot of. Uh, you, I'm sorry, Mike threw out there. Can you add Grand Marnier to a uh, margarita? Absolutely, you can. Uh, that that works actually in place of Montreal, or you can throw, or you can do it as a float on top. Uh, when that's usually what's called a Cadillac margarita. Um, but yeah, so in terms of like reposados, I think they're a nice age statement to work with. Uh, but anything like Añejo or extra Añejo, you're paying a premium for the amount of time that that spirit is spent spent in wood. And if you tell me you want a uh, Don Julio 1942 margarita, I'll make it for you. But in my, in my mind, I'm thinking, why don't you just use like the regular Don Julio? Because you need the herbaceous and some of the raw, like young agave notes. Because if not, you're going to a lot of the subtlety of the cocktail is going to be lost in the, uh, basically the symphony that the wood creates within the spirit. Okay. Yeah. I think you covered the questions, so maybe that's a good segue into learning a little more about tequila while we all enjoy. So, here is on the next 
drink, everyone. I gotta wet my whistle too, so cheers, everybody. So one thing a lot of people wanna ask is what is tequila? Uh, tequila essentially is a distilled agave spirit, but there's a few rules that you get to play along the lines. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, with the, uh, so what, basically to be tequila, uh, it has to be 100% agave, or it's what we call a misto, which is where you basically will take like grain, uh, neutral grain spirits, usually like some caramel colors, and then agave. Um, and with that, uh, it, 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 it's a cheaper, cheaper tequila, but it doesn't have like the really great, uh, the really great notes that you're going to get from 100% agave. Uh, but tequila is specifically produced in, tequila, in the tequila region of Mexico, which is essentially the state of Jalisco near Guadalajara. And it, the other main, uh, the other main criteria that has to be is that it has to be distilled in Mexico and it has to be at least distilled twice. Um, so usually you'll go above and beyond that, especially as you reach into some higher price point and some higher tier tequilas. But all in all, um, there's great tequilas out there at any price mark. Um, the one thing we keep talking about is tequila has to be 100% agave. Well, tequila specifically has to be Blue Weber agave, which is one very, very specific species of uh, basically of a cactus uh, or agave cactus out there that grows in the islands of Jalisco. And they take six to 10 years to mature. They are a huge plant. And it looks, and once you cut the, uh, the leaves off of it, it looks like a giant pineapple. That's why uh, agaves are called peanuts. And with that, once you get, once you have all the leaves and it's taking those six to 10 years to mature, what you have to do is you have to cook the tequila. And, oh, actually, I'm sorry. I did see a question come through about what's the difference between tequila and mezcal. That's, that's really where the agave difference comes in. So like I said, Blue Weber agave is one specific species of tequila, or one specific species of the agave. There are hundreds of agave out there, and there are actually many more types of agave, and even some desert grasses that you can use as, so for your fermentable sugars and mezcal. And then also, uh, and then also, once you have gotten the penis prepared, you then have to cook them to essentially turn those starches and sugars into something that's fermentable. And you can cook tequila, you can cook agave a couple different ways. A lot of people will use steam. A lot of people roast them in stone ovens. That's actually what uh, Lagratona does. They roast their tequila in stone ovens. And, but with mezcal, and it's more of a traditional, almost a rustic spirit in a way. And then a lot of times you'll throw the pinkies in a pit in the ground, throw hot coals on top of them, and, uh, and then cover it up with dirt. And to answer Katie's question, you have to be the judge when too much tequila, when tequila is too much tequila. I can't tell you that. And, um, but so when you, when you bury the agave and roast it with coals like you will with mezcal, that's where mezcal gets that really um, smoky, almost scotch-like note that it's really known for. Uh, other than that, realistically, outside of it being made in Jalisco and being made with whoever tequila, there's a lot of range in there that allow <laughs> yes, Cynthia, the next one is you will definitely know that it was too much tequila. Like I said, that's why it's a self metering thing there. Um, but in terms of how you actually go about producing tequila, there is no real difference. There's no real specific rules for it. Like there would be like bourbon or scotch or some other spirits out there because you can distill it either with a column still, you can do open air fermentation or closed fermentation. And it also can come down a lot to how you would go about extracting the agave, um, the agave juices for the fermentation process. Um, ways that you can do that, so like as far as extraction, you can use uh, what's called a tahona, which is a really large millstone that traditionally would have been pulled by a donkey. Um, you'll see a lot of uh, art artisanal tequilas out there will put like either a tahona, like for the place that does on their barrels, or you'll see donkeys tend to be a really big imagery and a lot of uh, skill labels. Um, but outside of that, I mean, outside of a Tahona, Lagratona uses stainless steel shredders, and you can also use stainless steel mechanical presses as well. Realistically, all you're trying to do is you're trying to get the juice out of the pina, so now you can, now you have workable sugars that you can ferment. Um, as for, we were talking about fermentation, you can do fermentation in uh, what they call concrete eggs. You can do open air fermentation 
and you can also ferment with the natural yeast and or pitched yeast. With water tuna, one thing about them is they actually use open air fermentation. So once they have their juice of the agave pressed out, it goes into basically an open air vat. The yeast that they use for fermentation is all naturally occurring in, uh, in and around the distillery or the tequilari itself. And with that, you're going to actually be able to experience the real terroir of where Jalisco is. And it, terroir is a concept you usually talk a lot about in wine, but it's becoming more and more as not only distillers, but brewers and winemakers really start using more and more local ingredients and give them local flavor. Um, then also, we want to talk about aging. And when we were talking about like, what's the best tequila to use out there, I mentioned that you know we have Blancos or Silver Tequilas, and with those, those are usually either going to go straight from still the bottle, or they will spit up to two months, usually in uh, concrete, because you don't want it to really hit the wood and, have, and get a lot of those oaky notes. And with that, um, those are usually best, those are usually either sit straight, usually as shots, or you'll use those to make cocktails. Um, Beyond that, you have to step into what's called a reposado or a rested tequila, like Lager Carmen is. Um, three to six months, or sorry, three months to a year is the criteria to hit a reposado. In this case, Lager Tona uses it, does eight months and barrels it previously held Jack Daniels. They chose, uh, they chose eight months because with that, they found they got nice vanilla and caramel notes from the barrel without being overly really heavy handed in terms of that because with the if you let if you let tequila sit in oak or a lot of times new oak and not previously used barrels those tannins in the oak really come come through and can overwhelm like those grassy white pepper and uh, minty notes that you typically find um, in natural agave and the natural agave uh, beyond that you have what's called an añejo which is one to three years you'll take it out of the barrel held when it was a reposado, the other one was a reposado. If we then do a smaller barrel with that, you're going to get more contact between the tequila and oaks. You're getting more of those oaky notes or barrel forward notes, I should say. And then there's extra añejo, which means you pour, you take it out of that small barrel, put it even into smaller barrels. So you're getting more contact between the spirit and the oak each time. And those will age for up to another three years. Um, those are the extra names have really become kind of big in the tequila world, especially in the Colorado market, because it appeals to those drinkers that typically would have drank bourbon or rye that are trying to branch out into something new. And then also, by letting it sit in oak, you round out some of those raw notes and some of those rough edges that some people can find off when you're not tequila. Other than that, uh, we've got one more drink to make, and I've only got nine minutes allotted for my class. Uh, Tiana, do you have any other questions for right now? I don't think so. I think everyone's enjoying their drinks, and we're ready for some Paloma. All right, awesome. Uh, Paloma is actually my favorite uh, tequila drink. And one thing we talk about here, especially at Keith, when we, when we train up our new bartenders, we talk about there being multiple ways to build a cocktail. Uh, with the margarita, we built that, that's a shaken cocktail. Uh, so we're going to use some vessel, we're going to shake it, we're going to get that emulsification, and then it essentially becomes something new. In terms of a Paloma, we're going to actually do what's called a built cocktail. So with this, we're not going to use tins, we're not going to use shaker cups or anything like that. This is very, very straightforward. I guarantee everybody at home has done this technique at least once before, probably with a vodka soda or a gin and tonic. Um, so what we'll do first is we're going to ice our glass down. I don't always like to fill totally to the top when I ice because I want to be able to give myself a little bit of room to build the cocktail itself and you account for a little bit of splashing. But as we mentioned before, we're going to start with our least expensive ingredients first. So in this case, it's going to be lime juice again. In this case, we'll use a half ounce. You can use some more of the agave syrup if you like. I personally don't because I don't like drinks that are overly sweet. And we really want tequila and the grapefruit soda to be the start of the show on the Paloma. Um, this is actually another one that you can, and this is a perfect example, guys. I love when this happens. Uh, it's a happy accident. This is a, a Paloma is another drink where you 
want to salt it, because we mentioned with the margarita, getting the salt in there really plays off of some of the natural notes. So I'm gonna take my ice here and dump it. I'm not out anything because I didn't have tequila in there just yet. I'm gonna rim half my glass with lime this time. Excuse me. I'm using my studio so I have to turn the lights on. And so with this, now that we got the drink partially ground with salt, we're going to go back to put it nice in here. And as I say, I like to leave myself a little bit of head space in the glass, just so that way I, I can pour in and I'm not worried about things flip, spilling out the whole time. Uh, so we're doing half ounce on the lime juice. And then this is a very, very straightforward drink, guys. We're going to take two ounces of, of the lager tire again. At this point, I am going to re-ice though, so that way I'm not because I'm not really pouring any of our measured ingredients in. So just a few more cubes there. Then we're going to take the uh, grapefruit soda. In this case, I love using uh, pink grapefruit. It is a little bit sweeter than a golden grapefruit. Um, and just to finish the drink off, just pour a little bit in on top. Usually, it'll come out to about three ounces. This is also why I don't like using agave on Paloma or agave simple on Paloma because more because we already have a sweet almond going in with the soda. I'd like to make sure that it's to where I want it to be at before I would go adding any other sweeteners or any other uh, lime juice. And you can be good to go with this. Uh, if you have a straw, give it a good stir. I'm going to just going to use a bar spoon and do what we call a swizzle. So right down the middle, little 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 spin of the spoon itself there, just really to. Uh, work to get the tequila and the lime on the bottom up into the uh, into the grapefruit soda itself. And I know most people got a grapefruit in their kits. Um, you can use like a grapefruit wedge on this. It does look one way, but for me, when I'm really trying to make a drink, I don't want the fruit in there. I don't really want the pith unless it's something specific. In this case, I'm just gonna take a little twist of a grapefruit. Uh, we always want to express it over the top. That's basically where you put the outer part of the peel towards the glass. You give it a little squeeze, and you're going to just get some of those oils that are naturally in the peel. Give it a nice twist here to release some more of those. Stick it right in the drink. And cheers. That's one of my guys. That's awesome. Do we have any other questions as we wrap this up? So yeah, Ali, again, could you just recap, start from the top and just recap the ingredients so we can all make sure we have it right? Absolutely. And sorry guys, I do know I have a tendency to speak a little fast, so I apologize for that. Um, so what we did with this, half ounce of lime juice, uh, then we did two ounces of the lager tequila, to kill, and then uh, put those in the glass over ice, and then we just sauce it off with the grapefruit soda. Um, I really like fever tree too. Again, I'm not a huge sweetness, or I'm not a guy that really likes a lot of sweetness in my drinks. So I think it strikes a nice balance between still being tart and having some sweet notes. And for those of you guys at home, if you want a drink that is going to be a little bit more sweet, you can add some more of the agave syrup that you have. And then you can, or if you like more tart and think it is overly sweet as is, you can always add more wine. All right, that sounds awesome. I was lucky that Matt was making mine while I was playing with Elliot. So well, that, you didn't tell me you had a bartender at home with you. I, yeah, I did. He's I'm trying. Sure. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Uh, cheers. cheers. Thank you so much. You guys are so welcome. Thank you for allowing us to be part of your event. It was great, and I hope you guys had a great time. It's a great cause and raised a ton of money tonight. Thank you so Thank much, you. Lee. Are there any final questions for Lee? I'm trying to run through to make sure I have them all. Hold on one second. All right, everybody just says thank you. I think everyone's enjoying their drinks. Thank you so much, Lee. We loved having you and really appreciate it. Big bravo. Thank you. thank you. All right. So now everybody, we are very excited to kick off our program. Um, we're gonna start with just a couple, here, sorry, there we go. We're gonna start with just a couple stories of Costco animals. Um, the first one is Dax, who is an adoptable dog who is with us. So if you find or think of a home that might be good for him, please keep that in mind. And the second is a really heartwarming adopt adoption story about a little cat named Ophelia. So we'll turn it over to that and we'll get started. Thank you all so much for being here. Hey guys, 
guys, um, Molly here with Underdog Behavior and Consulting. I just wanted to reach out and um, show you guys a little bit of Dax and his softer side. Um, some of you may have seen him on our Until Their Home page or the POSCO page. He's available for adoption through POSCO. He's a five-year-old lab mix. And um, Dax has some behavior challenges that we've been working through. He is on leash reactive and he's just pretty reactive in general to sounds and stimuli um, coming by the house, outside the front window, um, anything like that. And so, you know, he's been in training for that and he's come a long way. Um, but I think that that's really turned some people off to, to Daxi because when they meet him, they don't get to see what an incredibly sweet and loving dog he really is. Um, Dax is fully house trained. He is awesome in the house. He does not chew on your crap. He can be left alone all day while you're at work with no big deal. Um, he is down to snuggle all the time. He doesn't really enjoy walks that much because of how um, overstimulating they are. So you really, um, you really don't need to walk him, you know, that much. A few times a week, late at night, would be best. Uh, he can he can play tug. He loves to play tug. He can get his exercise content that way. He loves to train. Um, he can do a little bit of fetch, a few tosses. We can definitely train him to do a little more than that. Um, but what Dax really wants is somebody to snuggle with him. Um, he, he's dog selective. He does well with calm dogs. Uh, he likes to hump when he wants to play. He play bows and play bows and humps and humps. Um, so if, if you've got a dog who doesn't appreciate that, it's not a good fit. But if you have a calm dog that can de-escalate him or another humpy dog that could um, play with him and be fine with it, you know, he could be a good fit there too. So um, go ahead and reach out to Paws Co. if you're interested. This guy had a, a real tough, um, he had a tough few years there and a tough start. And he really just, um, he deserves a good home. And so please don't pass him over just because he's got a few challenges. We'll definitely support you guys um, if you end up wanting to, to, to take him to adopt Daxi. Um, I'm here for, for Dax's for the rest of his life to, to make sure that he's set up for success. So please reach out to POSCO if you'd like more information on him. And um, thanks for listening, guys. Please share. We got Ophelia, formerly known as Tiger Lily, from POSCO in March of this year, right as everything was shutting down. We fell in love with her instantly because of her spunk and her friendliness, and especially because she's a special case. POSCO was very upfront with us that Ophi has a diagnosis of FELV, or feline leukemia virus, which will shorten her lifespan substantially. We didn't know how easily she'd get adopted, even though she's clearly gorgeous. Um, but we knew that she deserved as happy a life as any other cat up for adoption. So we decided to snatch her up. She's been the happiest addition to our lives, especially in this time of uncertainty. You can't tell she has any sort of condition and is just the happiest, craziest, funniest spark in the room. For however long we have Ophi, she will have changed our lives forever. We've actually decided to only have Felv cats in the future because of our incredible experience with her. And we have Paws Co. to thank for taking her in, no matter her history or prognosis. So thank you, Paws Co. Okay, wow. Uh, those are some great stories on Ophi <laughs> and Dax. I almost cried. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have our little Harper, who sounds a lot like Dax, okay. came to us during uh, COVID. And uh, so many of these it. animals that have some special needs uh, have a, gain a special place in your heart. And uh, so that's really what tonight is all about, raising money to take care of all of the animals that we can and get some of these love uh, oh. Lovey's adopted. Oh, and yep. we've had a cat with um, feline leukemia and it was a wonderful cat. And yep. we gave that cat the best years of that cat's life. And yeah, it was hard, but um, yeah, he really was a wonderful cat. Mm -hmm. We loved him very, yep. very much. Yep. All right. So uh, these heartwarming stories, these amazing stories, 
are what Pause Co is about and why we're all here tonight. We thank everybody from uh, all over that has joined. Oh, it's so good to see those um, faces, isn't it? It's kind of hard to not be together in a room, but uh, it's kind of nice to be together virtually and uh, offers some opportunities. And Mixologist Lee, one of the nice things about it is we can try as many of those drinks as we want. We don't have to drive <laughs> anywhere. We have to drive. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for getting the party started, getting us warmed up. Uh, keep your silent auction bids going. We did notice that Footprints in the Snow, which is a really pretty picture and has some soft colors uh, in the grays and muted the light tones, greens, yeah. muted tones might look really in just the right room to be a perfect addition. Hadn't seen any bids on that. Mm -hmm. nope. Who's outbidding us? On Shanahan's. <laughs> We've been bidding and bidding and we're getting outbid on some That's things. okay. Uh, is that you, Please, AJ? outbid us all that you can. Yeah, hi, AJ. <laughs> all right, there are a couple of neat items out there. Uh, there's a pair of Icelandic skis from Oscar Blues. Oh, those are so cool. Right. Did you look at those? I have not looked I was at those thinking yet, about you. they look pretty good. <laughs> and by the way, uh, the actual Oscar Blues dog, we oh, just we, saw yes. today Oscar. because Oscar is a Posco dog and he now lives in Chicago he does. and he's doing beautifully. What a great Such dog a great, Oscar beautiful is. beautiful dog. Uh, there's the Vail Getaway. Maybe if you got the new uh, skis? Icelandic skis, you have to Vail. Could it probably be a pretty decent, I have it on inside uh, information because I'm the weather guy, that um, <laughs> La Nina is going to give us some pretty decent snows for Steamboat, Summit County, the Vail area this year. Northwesterly flow. We'll get into more details on that later. Uh, also, oh, cool. uh, this could be one of the top items. Well, uh, I mean, we and, have a little bit of a, a special place in our hearts yep. for this one. Uh, this is the Dream Studios bass guitar, and it's signed by uh, the rock it, band The Dangerous Summer. Which would be AJ and Matt. Yep. Thank Wait, you, AJ if you, and if you, Matt. If you signed there. it, give us a wave because uh, they all need to know who you are. Yes. And uh, it was played by AJ uh, during their 2019 tours. Yep. And uh, so it's gently used. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not gently, was it? But it is signed. It's a beautiful a guitar, bit. and uh, uh, we are uh, big fans of the Dangerous Summer. We yeah. love their new song, "Come Down." Yep. Oh, yep. so beautiful! Very good. And so the other beautiful. one that, is, since we're a family, we can't. We F can't say that. We can't say it. <laughs> there we go. All right, get a good thumbs but up. I do though. like "Come Down." I F really do. F them all. Um, <laughs> don't forget to vote still for your favorite pet on Pawsco. There they are. Look at these wonderful okay, little whoa. lovies. There's a little puggy and then there's a little Harper with black and a white little tuxedo shirt. Those are ours. Yep. We love them so. Yep. And then there's Poe and I've seen a few others. I have also bid on other people's animals just to make sure you all know I'm a fair opportunity bidder. Yeah. And um, so Harper came to us uh, during COVID because uh, we were asked to do a little fostering and her name was actually Hopper when we got her because she oh, has, there's, there's our Tilly. has a little uh, problem with her back end because she was born with spina bifida. So she kind of oh, hops. Harper. There she is in the upper right there, wagging no, her tail. Middle, upper right. And uh, we decided that no dog, nobody should be named mm -hmm. after their disability. disability no. And so our little granddaughter, who's almost uh, three, couldn't say Hopper and she called her Harper. Har har She'd say Hopper, come Hoppa, here Hopper. Hoppa. So we thought Harper <laughs> Hopper works. So and now great. she's part of our family because she has, we've grown to. I don't know this cat that's on the her. ladder, but I definitely um, bid on that one. Yep. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So auction and the pet calendar voting all end at 730. So we have uh, a little bit of time, More about 25 it. minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what we'd like to do is start with a couple of special Thanks. thank yous and thumbs up for the uh, Pawsco event site is presented by the 110 West Group LLC and the Dumb Friends League. Yay. Both of you. Wow, thank you so. Uh, we couldn't host this event without these important uh, sponsors. So we appreciate them so very yeah, much. Yep. We have other important sponsors up here for uh, some of our, uh, the Carboy Winery and uh, Angelo's and some of the other ones you see on the screen. So please remember that these Wonderful people and companies have helped us out tonight and maybe can help them out a little bit in turn. And we're grateful to people who have purchased tables and cocktail tables, which you see some of them listed here. All of the donations this evening go to support animals in need. Pawsco will make sure that your donations make a big difference. And a big thank you to our videographer, Joe Vassos, and to Kylie Campbell for putting together the amazing silent auctions, as well as our Pawsco volunteer, Tana Rokova. I'm very impressed. I could okay. say that. Now, 
we want to hear some remarks at this point from Cynthia Farrell. And Cynthia is the chair of the POSCO Board of Directors. And then we'll also hear from POSCO Executive Director, Tiana Nelson, who will share a few words as well. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to POSCO Wags and Whiskers 2020. I'm Cynthia Farrell, chair of the board of POSCO, and I am so excited to be here with you tonight. I'm so very appreciative that you are embracing the unique circumstances this year to join us from wherever you're at. While we'd love to be in person, of course, we are grateful for the ability to leverage technology, which allows our supporters from near and far, who otherwise might not be able to be here in person, to join us for our celebration this evening. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. I'd like to start our evening with a few key thank yous from the Board of Directors. First, to our table hosts, cocktail table hosts, thank you so much for your support to make this evening great. I'd also like to thank our silent auction donors and Kylie Campbell and her amazing team for pulling together a silent auction with some fantastic items. If you aren't already, make sure you've gotten registered and place some bids as we have some great items available for you. You still have time. Our silent auction closes at 730. To register and see what's available, go to the link that's posted in the chat. And we can't say thank you enough to PAWS co-founder and executive director, Tiana Nelson, and our amazing leadership team and volunteers for dedicating their time to make PAWS Co stronger than ever during a year that's been challenging for so many reasons. And of course, thank you to our MC, Mike Nelson. Now, some of you have been supporters of PAWS Co for years, while some of you are just getting to know us. I wanna take a minute to recall our important background why we're here, and the really important role that we play in animal welfare in Colorado. POSCO was built to fill gaps. That's what we do. We were founded upon the realization that rural area shelters in Colorado didn't have a rescue outlet for the animals in their care. Many of these shelters, from Burlington to Walsenburg to Rocky Ford, usually didn't have more than a couple dozen dogs, but they had few resources and very few placement options. As a result, animals would often stay in the shelter for months, if not years, sometimes without even a daily walk. Now that was in 2013, and POSCO visited these shelters and established trusting relationships that allowed us to bring animals from these shelters into POSCO, where they could get the love and attention they deserved in a foster home, along with access to a broader adoptive community in the Denver area. Since then, animal welfare in Colorado has changed and POSCO has changed with it. We started with a dedicated and really small group of volunteers holding weekly intake in Tiana's backyard. Now, only seven years later, we have more than 400 active volunteers. Our team is filled with experts and we're recognized as a leader in animal rescue in the region. POSCO has always existed to help the animals who need us the most. We are here to support our shelter partners and find out where our organization can fill the gaps and assist with challenges. In the last several years, that's meant that we've become dedicated to bringing animals into our organization who can't thrive in a shelter setting. And that's meant expanding our shelter partnerships to include urban shelters and even a select few just across our state line. So what do we mean when we say an animal can't thrive in a shelter setting? Now these can be animals with medical issues that the partner shelter just doesn't have the resources to address, or animals with behavioral issues, such as extreme anxiety in a shelter environment, which means they might slowly shut down and are unlikely to be adopted. It also means helping to support those shelters in areas with breed bans, by bringing into POSCO some of the strays and relinquished animals that end up in their care. POSCO helps animals. Stevie. Stevie's a blind pit bull with a heart of gold who was scared and confused sitting in a shelter, but adjusted quickly to the love of a foster home and became a playful, happy, silly dog who was adopted within weeks of settling into POSCO. POSCO helps animals like Badger. Badger was a kitten who was extremely ill for unknown reasons, but POSCO was able to work with our vet partners to determine that he had mega esophagus, 
and give him the resources he needed to start gaining weight and become a healthy, happy kitten who has been adopted. POSCO helps animals like Stanley. My husband and I fostered Stanley right after the COVID crisis closed our shelters. We pulled Stanley from the Adams County Shelter, one of the POSCO partner shelters, to help make room for the animals that would continue to come in even when they were closed for adoptions. After a few delightful weeks of having Stanley in our home where he made us laugh on a daily basis, Stanley was adopted and is now known as Henry and living a full life with his forever family. Now, these are just a few of the many incredible POSCO success stories. In a moment, we'll hear from Tiana, and she'll share more of these stories, as well as how we've supported our partners during COVID. And later this evening, you will share some videos from adopters and partners so you can see firsthand the impact of your donations. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. For your generosity in the silent auction and in our upcoming cattle raiser, POSCO is here to fill a gap in animal welfare. And that's what we do. And that means each of you and each dollar of your donation and contribution helps to fill that gap as well. And with that, let me turn it over to Tiana. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tiana Nelson, the Executive Director of POSCO. It's always an honor to be with you, and I want to thank you for taking time out of your weekend to be here and for all you do to support POSCO. We wouldn't be here without the support of our presenting sponsor, 110 West Group LLC, as well as our table sponsors and cocktail table sponsors. Thank you for continuing to support POSCO during this virtual year, even when there are no actual tables. Although I can't wait for future events and we can be back in the same room, tonight will be one to remember. I hope you, will all, you were all able to enjoy mixologist Miles from Peak Beverage and the amazing dinner specials from our partners at Anthony's, Carboy Winery, and Logan Street Restaurant. And coming up, you'll hear some amazing music by Tommy Cantillion of Beta Play. Best of all, I hope that this year you're celebrating POSCO with your furry friends very close by. So I'd like to take a few moments to talk about what POSCO has accomplished in this most challenging year. As Cynthia mentioned, POSCO has a mission to evolve to fill needs as they arise, and this year was certainly one of change. When COVID hit, our shelter partners closed their doors to the public and frantically needed to get animals transferred out of their facilities. POSCO was able to bring in more than 200 dogs and cats between the time that the coronavirus shut things down in March and the end of June. We provided critical support to our shelters and cleared out the Adams County shelter twice. Already this year, POSCO has helped more than 350 animals, 70% more than we assisted in 2019, and we still have two and a half months in the year. This is an example of how nimble POSCO is and how we're able to move quickly to meet the most pressing needs of Colorado's animals. That's thanks to our amazing and dedicated volunteer team that steps up time and time again. What we do shifts to accommodate the most pressing need, but what never changes is our why. Our why is Belle. Belle came to POSCO after she was having uncontrolled seizures in the shelter due to diabetes. During the six months with her foster family, she went through vet visits and medications to regulate her diabetes and seizures. Now she's home, and her doctors say she's filled with life and spunk and loves cuddles, sneaking food, and sleeping on the couch, whether it's allowed or not. Our why is Yuma a tiny black kitten who was abandoned at a farm and found by one of our rural shelter partners. She had a cut ear and an eye infection and needed a little extra TLC. Our why is Waits, a 14-year-old cat with kidney issues who came to us after his owner died because he was very stressed in the shelter environment. Our why is Beatrice. Beatrice is a one-year-old St. Bernard from Adams County Animal Services and she was exhibiting aggression and severe separation anxiety in the shelter. Her foster mom worked with one of our amazing trainers and put in a significant amount of effort to get Beatrice to a place where she was no longer afraid of the world. She's now living in Fort Collins and likes to hang out in the backyard while her mom gardens. POSCO is here for the underdog and cat, and no matter how POSCO continues to grow, that won't change. What also hasn't changed is our how. POSCO is a strong, sustainable organization that is able to do the work we do because of each of you. 
Because of our supporters and our volunteers, we're able to provide medical and behavioral care to ensure that the animals of Costco get the very best care and the very best outcomes. Our how helped Saber. He came from our partners at the Humane Society of the Pikes Peak region in Colorado Springs with severe hip dysplasia. The pain was causing him to be guarded with people in the shelter. He's currently doing well in his foster home and is on a healthy diet and doing low impact water exercises to lose enough weight to have surgery that he needs to go on and live a happy, pain-free life. Our how helped Echo, a three-year-old cat who came to Costco with an active wound on her neck that wouldn't heal, as well as allergy issues. Both issues that the shelter needed assistance with. She's healing up and getting on the right medications and will soon be available for adoption. Our how helped Willow. Willow is a great Pyrenees mix who came to us from a Colorado shelter partner. She was having trouble walking without assistance and she was terrified of people. When she arrived at Costco, we found out that she was struggling to walk because she was very pregnant with 12 puppies. All of the puppies thrived and grew into bouncy, fluffy, and enormous pups and are now in their forever homes. And our pal helped Poe. Poe spent nearly four years in a shelter in Pueblo that wasn't able to complete the double knee surgery she needed. At Pazco, she received the knee surgeries, had a dental to remove her cracked teeth, and got the training she needed to start working on her love of running after cars, which is a slightly dangerous hobby. My fiance Matt and I were her fosters, and after more than 100 fosters coming through our house over the last seven years, we finally caved and welcomed her into our family last month. This year, we expect Pazco will help about 400 dogs and cats, and that comes with a lot of vet bills. We all know the occasional dread of getting a vet bill for our own animals. And for POSCO, we have vet bills for about 160 more animals than last year, if you can imagine. This is where we need you. And we need your support to join us in believing in the underdog and cat, in believing in the animals who need a little extra help but are worth every bit of it. And with the help are able to go on to live beautiful, full lives. So thank you from POSCO and from our amazing shelter partners for helping us to fill gaps within the lives of these animals and for allowing us to help more animals when we work together. On behalf of the volunteers and the thousands of animals that POSCO has helped in the past and the thousands of animals that POSCO will help in the future, thank you for all you have done to support POSCO and thank you in advance for your continued support. Thank you. Ah, wow. I cried. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Tiana Nelson does that to us. Yes, she does. But uh, so do the animals. Yes. Yeah. So POSCO is, as you can see, just amazing. And it's so directly related to the people who are involved and have the huge hearts for animals like Stevie and Echo and Poe and the others that uh, you saw. Those volunteers are, I mean, they're amazing. They're just unbelievable. Yeah. And we're going to turn it over to a a video that's going to give you more about the impact that POSCO makes. So get ready for more of those adorable faces. But a reminder, we are now officially at 7, 620? 720? No, no, seven. We're at central time. We're so at central we're, time. We're, we're struggling. So we have uh, 10 more minutes because the auction closes at 730. So uh, check your silent auction items and uh, keep bidding uh, often. <gasps> Who did this to me? Oh, somebody Who else. Who just did this to me? Who just good. did it? Whoever it was. And if you do need any you. help, you can uh, <laughs> you can call or text Leah as well for some. So now let's uh, let's roll that video, and we'll be back with uh, a little bit more coming in just a few minutes. <laughs> why Gizmo was so important to me. I ended up getting him from POSCO via a foster mom, coworker friend, and I honestly thought I rescued him. But a year later, I got sick with a lot of autoimmune issues. I'm still struggling with those, and it's really forced me to kind of be hometown. So honestly, um, I realized he was brought into my life to rescue me, and he's the first face I see in the morning and the last face I see at night, and sometimes the only face I see every day. And even as I talk to you, he is right there, 
He doesn't like to look at the camera though. He's a little camera shy. Even when I can say we've had a lot of fun adventures. Two years ago, I was picked as one of six fans nationally in a Ford Hall of Fans competition and Terrell Davis came to our house and um, almost dropped Gizmo. I didn't, I promise you, I would never hurt the dog. But um, it was just a fun experience and he had to be the most famous Chihuahua in the NFL at that time. So it's kind of special, but I just want to say thank you because honestly, he saved me. And I don't know what I would do without him. So thank you so much. He means the world to me. Thank you, Pasco. What does Pasco mean to me? It means two simple things. It means hope and it means love. It gives me hope that animals that are not really in a good situation and are not so much of an unhappy place are getting the opportunity to go to their loving foster home where they can start thriving again and be happy again and want to play again. And besides the hope, Pasco also gives me love because you know, it's not just the friendly people and the nice, uh, nice uh, members of the Pasco team, uh, but it's also the fact that you get to meet the people that are looking to find their forever furry friend. And I love that Pasco allows me to change the life of others by connecting them with one another and then seeing those happy stories and, uh, you know, being sent some of the photos of my previous fosters and their happy life, how they're enjoying the garden and enjoying the burger. There's probably nothing more gratifying than that. So that's why I really love Pasco and I love being a part of the team. Thank you. When I was first looking into adoption, I was pretty nervous because I'm a full-time student and that requires so much time. But as soon as I saw Piper on the front page of the adoption website, I knew that she was going to be my best friend. Um, I saw her come around the corner with her uh, foster parents and I just, my heart sang. <laughs> I was so excited. And she's been the most amazing thing in my life. She's so grounding and she's always there when I need her. Um, and she's really... She's so snuggly. <laughs> so I wanted to thank Pazco for bringing her into my life and for connecting me with such an amazing dog and a rescue and <laughs> something, uh, a relationship that has really changed my life for the better. I think we came across Pazco online and boy, what a blessing that was. The fit for, for us and Mishka was just incredible. We, we could pretty much tell um, when we first met her and we spent some time with her at a park that sh she was going to be part of our family. Um, the, the thing that really stood out for us was, was the diligence they did, the due diligence they did in, in, in uh, the adopters, and checking them out, making sure that the, the pets would have a good home and they were well cared for. With, with Mishka, we got to meet the, the foster. Um, Melissa, if you're still there, Melissa Kennedy, and you did a great job with Mishka because she's been a really, really great dog. We hope that you can find what you're looking for and uh, Posco, keep up the great work. It's outstanding and I, and I can't recommend you guys highly enough. Posco has been one of our number one rescue partners for as long as I can remember. They have always helped our shelter with countless of animals and have taken on some of the most costly of medical cases. We always know we can rely on POSCO whenever needed, and once the COVID-19 pandemic hit, they went above and beyond for our rescue organization and helped us out more than anybody else did. POSCO helped our shelter place over 62 animals. Words cannot express how thankful and lucky we feel to have a rescue like POSCO by our side. We always know that any animal that goes to them is going to be extremely well taken care of and matched in their perfect home. POSCO is truly, truly the gold standard in animal rescue. POSCO deserves all of the recognition and more because they are truly one of a kind and we could not do what we do or be so successful without them. We owe pause co so much and we have so much gratitude and respect for them augustine and all of the staff at denver animal protection are so appreciative of the partnership that we have with pause co 
Over the last year, we've saved 35 animals and they've gotten to go to their forever homes. And we've also released 73 cats back to the community. Dogs like Augustine are also so grateful. She's leaving in the next day or two to a POSCO foster home. So thank you for everything that you've done over the last years. And we're really looking forward to our continued work together. Poe and I just wanted to thank all of you amazing volunteers and supporters of POSCO. Um, Poe, because of you, Poe got out of the shelter in Pueblo earlier this year. She had her double knee surgeries and she's doing really well. Um, and my fiance and I, Matt, just adopted her. Um, but truly, honest, there's no better team in the world and I am just so grateful that I've had the opportunity to work with you all and you have built such an incredible organization together. So from Poe and I, thank you for everything you do and hope you have a wonderful evening. Thanks for all your support. Oh, that's nice stuff. So we are back live here again with the wags and whiskers and uh, we have one minute left on uh, the silent auction. So check really quick here because you have about 60 seconds left. And if you want to make 60 seconds really uh, seem like a long time. Go stand in the DMV line. No, I was going to say just <laughs> dead air in a television. Is 60 seconds of dead air feel like forever. No, that is a joke that we've taught. If they ever, if the doctor ever tells you that you only have three months to live, go to the Department of Motor Vehicles and spend it there because it'll feel like an eternity. <laughs> so anyway, okay, bad, bad we'll be here all, I hope we're not going to be here all, all week because once again, we're in this charming... Uh, hotel room. <laughs> Chicago land hotel room here with, it's a lovely... Uh, Anyway, it's uh, small and it's but we're just delighted to be here. Days. And then I, you know, the, 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 these uh, virtual fundraisers, it, one benefit I think we found is that people from all over the country can be a part of things and can Absolutely. participate, which is exciting. Yeah, but we do look forward to uh, getting back being together. back together, everybody yeah. next year and like uh, high fives. Yeah, and doing it. And, no and boom, we are officially at seven thirty, and the silent auction is closed. is closed. And so now it's time for it is time for. The paddle raiser, as we like to call it, the paw raiser. How do you make a paw? Like, paw raiser. Paws like that. Yeah. Scratch it. Whatever. Like that. Yeah. Everybody, everybody, do the paw raiser yeah, with there us. There you go. Paw. Everybody, raise well, your paw. <laughs> paw, paw. There you go. Very good. Oh, very nice. Yes, Nicely I'm done, everybody. Yay. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Uh, so our goal on the, the whole evening is to, to try and raise $50,000, not just from the paw raiser, oh, but our total okay. this okay. evening. And of course, the paw raiser can get us there. Um, now, you'll need your phone because that's your paw. Your, that's your paw. This is how you're going to bid. So, oh, there we go. Okay, so you've, okay. you've lost us, but you need to remember that as we do this, you're going to click on your link that you had for your auction when you were silent bidding, and you can go into your probably into your text messages because it's been telling you all night if you won or lost mm. or whatever. And then, um, yes, it told me I lost my Shanahan's. Thank you. I want to know who I lost it no, you to. You better invite us along. No, no, I don't uh, want to come. <laughs> if you uh, win, by the way, a physical item in the uh, silent auction, POSCO volunteers will reach out to the auction winners and coordinate pickup and or shipping. And as you know, uh, we've talked about it's been a big year for POSCO and they need your help. Every donation matters. We have always said at POSCO, we, we, let's do all we can when we can. And uh, so you're going to want to go to all items or under menu, you would go to all items or you can go to, um, hang on. Yeah, just go to menu, hit all items, and it'll be the very first one that says, thank you for your support. It says paw raiser, donate to POSCO. And Mike's going to walk you through it, but it's, I don't know if you can see that, but it's going to be this one right here, the very first, whoops. So you hit all items, the very first one. And then it's going to take you to this right here. There we go. And he's going to walk through it. Okay, so we're going to try to raise twenty thousand dollars through the paw raiser. We and can do this. We're going to walk you through each of the different levels so that you can uh, understand just how much money and what how much of a difference the dollars that you donate. And feel free throughout any of this uh, for any level that you want to donate. Uh, so uh, we are going to start uh, then. We're going to go at the uh, $2,500 level, and that amount allows Pawsco to take in an animal that has an undiagnosed 
condition and provide exploratory vet care and follow through treatment. And this is so important because POSCO is one of the only organizations that takes animals from shelters when they have a major issue that's not diagnosed. So we're looking here, we're watching and seeing, and uh, we do have from Jack and Val Seppel, they have yeah. donated 20 Oh. Seven or twenty five hundred dollars. You can do twenty seven hundred yep. if you want. Woohoo! Uh, you guys, Jack and Val awesome. Semple, thank you so much. That is that so is... important. Woohoo! Um, so again, you can uh, donate any level that you'd like, but uh, to the Sepples, we really appreciate that. Again, that will take an animal with an undiagnosed issue and do all of the tests that are necessary. Uh, really important. If okay. you didn't get anything in the, the silent auction, you can always add this in your head and go, okay, I could do 2,500 because I was planning to spend that tonight. Yeah, right. Um, our next level is the $1,000 level. And at $1,000, POSCO is able to address a life-threatening emergency situation to make sure that every animal in their care receives the immediate care when needed. <gasps> Look at Look those at kitties, those they're adorable. Yes. And so at the $1,000 level, we would like to, uh, to highlight and to, to Tiana Nelson. Wow, Mom, congratulations, Mary. thank you. And also we'd like to note that uh, Brett and Dawn Anderson are gonna continue their $1,000 per month donations that they did last year. Can so I just let's say woohoo! All give them a round of applause for that. That is, so Brett and Raise Dawn Anderson, people. that is pretty outstanding. That is, so again, uh, $1,000 will uh, address life-threatening emergency situations to make sure every animal in their care receives immediate care when needed. Thank you very much. Our next level is at the $500 level. And this is where POSCO can take in an animal who needs behavioral assistance and give them the reinforcement and the care that they need to thrive. So uh, we'll pause on this and let, pardon the pun, and let you guys uh, just think about that if you can. Again, at $500, uh, we can take an animal like Poe or like our Harper. Harper and give them the behavioral modifications that they need. And so uh, uh, Sharif Abdel Himid, uh, $500. Thank you very, very much for that. We might have another one coming in here, oh, it looks yeah. like. Oh. And Brooke Bronson, thank you so much for that. Can I just say, none of these are should be taken lightly. No, not at all. So, Celebrate so much, all of guys. these donations. Of They're very, very important. Woohoo! Raise it. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. And uh, now, let's... Uh, we, are, we are waiting just to make sure. We don't want to rush anyone nope. because we've actually been doing these um, virtual fundraisers. And one of the things we've noticed is there's a lot of rushing through the, the paw or the um, the um, paddle raiser and people have to think about it. This is a big commitment, but it's also an important commitment. You've got these animals that truly need you. And I don't know about you, but when I, when we adopted, um, our dogs, all of our dogs, every one of them has come with some kind of a medical need. And I can't imagine if we had taken Harper, what would have happened. Right. Um, go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, I wanna celebrate Anna Ewing for also another $500 uh, donation. Thank, Thank you, you Anna. Anna. That is just wonderful. Um, and, it, and this year during this time of COVID, you saw the, the heartfelt stories about how sometimes the, uh, it's not that you save the animal, it's the animal saves you. And I think that's really true. They, they change our lives. They, mm -hmm. they make our lives better. And uh, that is so true. And so on. celebrate all of our donations so far. Um, let's go on now to um, the $250 level. And at $250, POSCO can take in an animal that uh, we talked about it in the earlier video. That's what we call a shutdown animal, an animal that is uh, getting the point uh, from their own emotions that they probably will not be able to be ado adopted just from the stress of being in a shelter. And we can take a shutdown animal and give them the basic vet care that they need and time in a foster home to decompress and become the animal that they are meant to be. Do you have some of those donors do. for us, Cindy? We have four so far. Okay, go ahead. Well, we have Cynthia Farrell and thank you, Cynthia. I, I just think that's wonderful. We have Kate Goldberg. Thank you, Kate. I'm gonna applaud you all when I'm done reading. 
I myself and Mike, we gave 250. Jen Smith gave 250 and Victoria Francis gave 250. That's where we're at right now for a total of 1,250 in the $250. And I'm gonna give you guys an applause. I can't tell you how much it means to me because I know that I have had so many vet bills. I can't imagine what POSCO goes through every single month when those vet, vet bills come in from whether it's tender touch or wherever and they go, ah. Uh, and I want you to think about that because this is a really big deal. And I a bulletin, also, yeah, a bulletin an update. this has just come in, breaking news. And we would like to thank Daryl Shakespeare Ooh, for a $1,000 donation. Ah, thank so, you, Daryl, yeah. that's wonderful. And then uh, we hope Sarah. Sarah Mann has also uh, Mann. been a, uh, a donor at the, uh, $500 level. At the $500 level. Yes, and it's yep. wonderful. The $250. Or $250, yeah. I'm sorry. Sarah, we did not want you to do that. $500, yeah. you did not get sorry. that. <laughs> Sarah's like having a panic attack, but it's okay. We know what you really did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you, everybody, so far that's I mean, uh, done this. This is terrific. Wow. Just amazing. Just amazing. Okay. Now, okay, going on. Uh, we're going to move on. And now, again, give what you can when you can is so important. And so our so next important. levels are combined. We have the 100 okay. the 50 and the $25 level. I know these are tough times right now as, uh, in this time of uh, coronavirus, but... Uh, and many folks are struggling a little bit, but uh, that these dollars are all going to the care of the animals. So if you can donate what you can at 100 or 50 and at 25, and the gifts make a huge difference. And the reason that POSCO is here is because of all the work that we do together to change the animals' uh, lives that are in need. We have another one. Uh, Julie Ratner is also donated at 250. And let's just double check up here on the top. Yeah, we did, Anna. Okay, yep. that's all right. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you, Julie, for adding uh, that. And we have some great $100 donors, uh, Kelly Stark and Stephanie and Kimberly Miles, Ben Hawk, Kelly Stevens, Kate Wessels, and Carrie Oatberg. You know, we all have something going on in our lives right now, and I do want to applaud each and every one of you, but I'm just going to throw this out here, and, and Kim, don't get mad at me, <laughs> because I know you've been through a lot this year, and you had a baby, and you were sick for a little bit, and yet you still find it in your heart to come up with this $100, and I know we've all got something. Every single person in this entire, on this webinar, this this Zoom gala is is doing this, and I just can't tell you each and every one of you, what you're doing is making a huge difference. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Sandra Elder also gave a $100 donation. Thank you, Sandra. And we have, uh, you know, oh. each one of these makes a difference. So to Linda Chase and Diana Leatherman. Uh, hi, Diana. Hi, Diana. Uh, I didn't know you were on. Catherine Mayer, Sarah Kubaki, Andrea Villarreal. And Rachel Hubel, we uh, appreciate your donations as well. Each one of these uh, makes wonderful. a thank big you. difference. And we thank, thank you all you. so much. Okay, we're just kind of scrolling. Yeah. We're new at this. Well, we're only new at this this adding names thing because, yep. you know, well, and we we both had to put on our glasses. I mean, you don't look as good when you're wearing the glasses as you well, do I without think, them. I think you look well, rather well, fetching. Oh, thanks, so my dear. I'm That's fetching, he says. Well, we'll see. We're in a yeah. hotel room. You never know what'll happen. <laughs> That's, I think, again, pardon the, the pun if we're saying you're fetching, right? For... <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> That's just... Tiana's a little embarrassed by her no, parents, but that's a normal a thing. Bit, She's yeah. been embarrassed by us since We're Dave. assuming that everybody has figured out oh, that Tiana Nelson is our, our daughter. daughter. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> but you may not have known that. Uh, if not, now the cover's off on that particular story. Yeah, so okay. there you go. All right. <laughs> Sorry, <Grins>. okay. <laughs> um, and now we are on to okay. Well, we're, we're right there, and uh, oh, well, no, actually, we oh, we got not. some Anders is there. Uh, we have some Tiana's $25 brother. Dollars. Hey, AJ, thank you, AJ, and, and Kelsey. Uh, we appreciate that from both Anders of you guys. Nelson, thank yep, you. Yep, that is wonderful news. We appreciate you know what? that. So I know much. that that is a hard thing for some people, and we are just appreciate yep. it. So, oh, got and nice Stacy just. Came in yep, at fifty dollars. Yep, yep. These numbers continue to. You know, pop we are over here. ten thousand dollars, I think, right now. I hope. Um, uh, hang on, I've got a, a note here from somebody. Oh. Oh. 
Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, T. Yeah. We, thank you for saying it's we comedy. Are, we are humorous. You I know, always... here's my one joke. I, can I tell this uh -huh, one? Sure. Okay. You can tell I anything always you thought want. it would be great if you adopt a dog to name your dog naked. <laughs> Because then your neighbors are going to really wonder who's living next door when you go, hey, honey, let's get naked and go for a walk. But I'm bum. He also wanted to name our cats catastrophic, catatonic, cata. There's another remember. one. There were a whole bunch was, of them. Yeah. I mean, the guy has like a million. Old catalog. Old catalog, yeah. yeah. There you go. So, you know, hey, AJ thinks we're funny. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I always say if we were any funnier, people yep. would laugh. Uh, Marie Fa Francis, St. Pierre, thank you for your donation. Ooh, wonderful. Yep. Thank you. We appreciate all of these. And oh. uh, Anne Preble, thank yep. you so much as well. You guys, this is yep. wonderful. Congratulations. Yeah, we're, we're ratcheting that up. It must be the comedy jokes. Well, we could keep going. I, yeah. I could tell dirty jokes. Some people would say, I'll give you $500 <laughs> to do Stop, stop talking. talking. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh, our our son just said <laughs> our grandson is dying here over the naked joke. <laughs> He's eight. <laughs> uh, oh wait, uh, dirty jokes from Cindy. I oh well. Yep, I think the brown liquor in the paper cups is making comedy come up. It's so true. I have lemon it's vodka true. in mine. Yeah. <laughs> Tiana's dying. She's like, Mom, I've never shush. <laughs> Had single malt scotch in a paper cup. It's um. It, there's a first for everything. The paper adds a certain something. Je ne sais quoi. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guys, we'll keep talking okay. if you'll keep donating. Yeah. Oh, we have more people. Katie Marshall gave us a yeah. hundred dollars. And Mr. Matt Kennedy Matt in there Kennedy too. Kennedy gave us a hundred dollars. Marie Francis Saint. Oh wait, I can't read it. Sorry, Marie Francis. Um, Saint Pierre gave us a hundred dollars. Oh my gosh. That's excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you, we guys. Oh, all. my gosh. We are getting up okay. there. We are so close. And... Okay. According to the latest updates, we are Thanks, just under... Uh, we're about $400 away from our goal here. Oh, come on, uh, you guys. We can do so this. Let, if you Don't haven't done anything yet... Again. And... <laughs> uh, and you can find your heart to, to toss in just a little bit more. We're almost... The Murphys there. are right. Every yep. dollar counts. Yep, it does. It does. Okay, well, have I messed up the screen here. Maybe, but I am also I'm going to wait. Now we have some some additional dollars, just little amounts of. I don't mean little, little. I mean Stephen Rogers gave us ten dollars. Obviously, the Andersons gave us twelve thousand dollars, which is crazy. Okay, okay. Corey Mastri, oh, I'm just gonna Master Mastriani. Gave us one hundred and seventy nine dollars, I, I think. There must be some significance and there. Tiffany Kaptish did seventy five. Congratulations, yep. Yep. you guys! I'm so seriously going to tell you how much it means to us. Yep. To give and give like you're giving is it's it's amazing. Yep. It is just my heart is is so overwhelmed. We by just it. went over the oh, top. We're over ten thousand. Right. Okay, very so good. let me see here where we're at and see if anybody else added that we didn't bring up to date on cliff olin gave us a hundred dollars um and karen rosen gave us a hundred i don't believe we mentioned okay. her and hannah yaritz. hannah yaritz hannah yaritz gave us 50 and uh, there we go there we are so far wonderful wonderful uh tiana give me the high sign should we go ahead and move on or, or we... should i tell a dirty joke we're good she said <laughs> one, one dirty joke and then we can move on joke I had to tell it so because my grandson is listening, so it has to be not what are you gonna do? dirty. Um, okay, I got it. A newlywed couple had saved themselves. She got into bed and she's waiting for her husband. And he comes out of the bathroom and he's wearing his underwear oh, and his one. socks. Jeez. And she says, I you thought you were coming one? to bed. Oh my. And she, he said, well, I'm a little uncomfortable. And she said, well, oh, with what? And he goes, well, my knees. And she goes, yeah, I noticed your knees, but what's going on? She said, well, when I was little, I had measles. And she said, you mean measles? And he, no, measles. And she said, oh, okay. It doesn't matter. Get to bed. Contagious. And then he took off his socks and she said, ooh, what's with the toes? So, well, when I was little, I had tolio. She said, polio? No, tolio. It's not contagious. It's not hereditary. Just, can we get, get on with it? And she said, sure, come, come, come. And then he took off his underwear and she said, oh my God, don't tell me you had small cocks. <laughs> 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 I 
Thank you. Thank you. I'll be here all night. <laughs> Look at the totals there. We just <laughs> went over. And I don't even see any additional, any additional. No, <laughs> nobody even liked it. Oh, Christopher Stern. Thank there you, you very much. <laughs> is, is Elise new? Elise Rosa? Is she new? You want to tell one more? You'll tell no, you flying to Hawaii. You can joke. tell it. Oh, you're, well, I can't tell it. <laughs> okay. All right. No. You I think it's time for me to stop. <laughs> oh, Tiana wants you to tell the Hawaii. You, this is one of your favorites. <laughs> oh, thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I'll start it here. <laughs> it was worth another $25. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> All right. Will we get, if we do one more bad. If you guys, if you guys will give us, okay. Andrew and Sarah just gave another 50 because it was totally worth okay, it. I am right. telling okay. one more joke, okay. Tiana. Sorry. Yep. But it's worth the money and the embarrassment to you and to myself. Okay, there was this newlywed couple and they were on a plane. They were going to Hawaii and she's still in her wedding dress. And she's so excited. She says, Anders, I really think you need to put, wait a minute. Anders, I think you need to like put Liam away. Anyways, and so she, she climbs on top of his lap and she says, Oh, 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 we're big. <laughs> and she says, um, oh, honey, come on, we, come on. And he goes, no, no, no. There's all these Plain. people around. People. You have to turn. You okay. have to turn. I, this is this, this is like one of those. And like she your... climbs on his lap like this. And she says, excuse me. And she goes, I know what we can do. She goes, are you going to Hawaii? Are you going to Hawaii? Oh, yay, we're all going to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that I've embarrassed my daughter immensely, possibly educated my grandson, yeah. and I've embarrassed myself, let's see what we've done. <laughs> okay, all right, how we look at that total? No. <laughs> and Mary Kirkpatrick, I don't ever want to hear about this again. No. Nope. All right. Okay. We've done great. All right. Back to our scripted program. Uh, so. <laughs> Thank you all so much uh, for all of your generosity. Oh, thank you, Cynthia. She just said we went over well. 11,000 because go. of my jokes. <laughs> you know what we always say about Cindy? If she were any funnier, people would laugh. It's true. Or donate. I don't really care. <laughs> All right. Oh, Amanda Miller, thank you yeah. so much. I miss you like crazy, girl. <laughs> so we want to thank 110 West Group LLC and, of course, the Denver Dumb Friends League. John, thank you for adding another $500. You oh. man, I love you. Yeah. I don't even know you and I love you. <laughs> okay. I think we're having too much fun. Yeah. I don't want to stop. You know, the difference here is normally the reason I'm asked to MC is because having been a television weatherman for my whole career, I only talk for two and a half minutes and then I shut up. But with Cindy along, it really works. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So without further ado. Oh, wait, uh, we have something else to tell them. What? Something you else got a new tone? What's our? We have dogs that we have to announce that are our dogs for the calendar. Is that not? Yet. Is that not yet? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sarah, thank you for $10 more dollars and Anne for $10 more dollars right. and Anders for $25 more dollars. And Mikulam. Um, right. So we're okay, going we to, we have to do ben, a recorded segment here. But yes, okay. Thanks but one more second. people, dear. Ben Hawk, thank you for 150. Mikulam um, Munoz, 25 more. Anders Nelson, another 25. Ann Preble, 10. Sarah Kabaki, 10. Thank you, you guys. I really appreciate your um, donating for my humor. <laughs> Taking it on the road next week, I think. Right. right. <laughs> now, there's one more little joke. That was the, oh, uh, the that? couple. That's celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. And uh, no, the, we have two actually. Okay. We have the couple celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary and they're out having this romantic dinner together. And, and a, a fairy shows up. Fairy shows up and says, wow, you guys are so romantic. We just, in fairyland, we couldn't help but notice. And so we've come down and we want to grant you each one wish. And so the fairy says to the woman, what would you like for your wish? You can have anything you want. She said, I want a world, around the world trip with my husband who I love after 40 years of marriage, which will be next May for right, us. Right. And the fairy says, that is so wonderful. Wish granted. granted. And then the fairy turns to the man and says, what would you like? And he thinks for a while and he finally kind of sighs. He says, uh, you know, sweetheart, I'm sorry. 
uh, Ferry, I'm sorry, but this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and my wish, I want to be married to a woman that's 30 years younger than me. And the fairy kind of rolls his eyes. And the woman is oh, crying and everything. I know. Yeah. And all of a sudden the fairy goes like that and turns the guy into a 90 year old man. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of my favorites. Okay. Then the other one of those, which uh, is kind of a corollary. So a couple's at their 50th wedding anniversary. Oh my God, this one's just and all these wonderful heartfelt toasts from the yeah, kids and everything. You're not getting, the, they're not donating they don't laugh compared to me you, like to, right. to me. Finally, the husband gets up and he raises his glass and he goes, 50 years. If I'd have killed her when I wanted to, I'd be out of jail by now. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to be married for a long time to really appreciate these jokes, but we've been married forever. It's like dog years, right? <laughs> like dog years. Yeah, we've been married 280 years. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yes. All right, so now Sorry. our daughter's giving us- <laughs> She time. really wants us to be done. Yep. Uh, so uh, we're now going to head over to Cynthia and Tiana for a special guest, Bruce, and special guest Bruce, rather. <laughs> this is part of this written down, not ad lib. Imagine and, if he wasn't a professional, uh, how that would come out. Yeah, imagine if we not a professional <laughs> broadcaster, how this would come out. Uh, for an adoptable animal spotlight. <laughs> You're so bad. <laughs> Bruce is a little excited to be here tonight. We hope you are too. Uh, Bruce is a three-year-old, adorable, loving, and snuggly pup. He's built for adoption through Posco. He loves the camera, <laughs> loves snuggles, toys, um, walks, and all sorts of stuff. So he's a blast. Um, he has been with Posco for a little while because he does not enjoy other dogs too much. So even on walks, we get a little ramped up. Um, but speaking from personal experience, I have a dog who's like that, and there's tons of ways around it, and he has so much love to give. So we're hoping that we can find him a great home. We know we can. Um, and please spread the word about Bruce. And we think he'd be great in a home with some older kids. Obviously, you can see he's got a lot of energy, and at almost 90 pounds, he might be a little much for younger kids. Uh, but if you have some older kids to help exercise him and train him, um, no doubt he would absolutely love a home, a really active home, where he can get a lot of love. Right, Bruce? Yep. <laughs> He's very excited to be with us here tonight. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We're excited for the evening. Gotcha. Yay, Bruce. Way to go well for done. that. What a cute dog. Very, very uh -huh. nice. Okay, now we hope that Bruce can find a home soon. And uh, now as we tally up some of the totals here, we're gonna hear from Tommy Cantillion from Beta Play. And uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes. So enjoy some music. We'll have all the totals and the results of da -da -da, the pet calendar winners. Thanks for the additional, the additional um, donations, guys. What's up, everybody? My name's Tom Cantillon, coming to you live from Southern California via the internet. Um, I want to thank everybody so far for your generosity in helping out POSCO tonight. I'm so excited to be here. I have two dogs. One of them's a rescue, uh, and he's a big bundle of love, and so this is super close to my heart. Um, I'm going to play a few songs here, uh, and while I do, let's keep getting those numbers up, helping out these animals, and... Um, yeah, let's sing a little bit. Feel free to sing along where you are. Um, I won't hear you, but I'll feel you. <laughs> i 
Picture that will fit in the folds of my wallet It stayed pretty good Still amazed I didn't lose it on the roof of the place When I was drunk and I was thinking of you Now, hey, we do the children They were singing the tunes on the streets You could hear from the side you Used to take the subway out of the house in the bus I'd wait for you and not try to hide Now, love don't play Any games with you Then in my heart if you don't want it to Is shaking now, well, honey, I don't blame you. Hell, I still love you, New York. Hell, I still love you, New York. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I remember Christmas in the blistering cold in the church on the Upper West Side. Babe, I said this thing and I was holding your arms You were holding my trust like a child Found a lot of trouble on Avenue B But I tried to keep the overhang low oh, Farewell to the city and the love of my life Cause we left before we had to go Now, love don't play any games with you About a tune from the 80s the 1980s not the 1880s not super familiar with songs from that era okay
Y'all remember Weezer? Remember Weezer? We grew up with them. This is actually an oldie. It's from like 94, I think, 95. It's a fun song. Here we go. What's with these homies dissing my girl? Why do they got a front? What did we ever do to these guys that made them so violent? Ooh, but you know I'm yours. Ooh, and I know you're mine. Ooh, ooh, that's for all, all time. Be you, I look just like Buddy. super fun for me. I hope it was for you. Um, I'm going to see y'all again in a little bit. Okay. Wow, that was really great stuff. Thank you, Tom. That's Tom Cantillon. Cantillon, I'm sorry. And he looked very well rested. For being a new daddy. Yeah. yeah and I'll his say. wife just had a baby girl. So congratulations on that. And we'll have more Tom's music coming up in just a bit. But now, do we have the final totals? Well, I think so. I mean, okay. but I have to say we've had a couple of additional. Um, you want to name off a few well, things? Well, I mean, Amanda Miller gave a little bit more. I think she gave another, um, I don't know, she's up to 250 or something like that. And we just had some additional people and uh, or people who gave, but gave a little bit more because apparently they think we're funny. I thought that was pretty nice of them. They might have been bidding to get us off the air. That could have been the case too. Well, are you ready? Yeah, okay, so before we uh, give you the total here, we just want to mention this has been such an important night for Pawsco. It's been a wild 2020 for sure, and we really appreciate everybody uh, hanging in and donating what you can because it certainly is, the need is there, and uh, this is all going to go a long way, so thank you very much. Um, your gifts will allow Pawsco to help the animals who need them the most in the year ahead. So at this point, drum roll. Wait, hang on. vacation forty four thousand one hundred and eighty seven dollars that's great that is great okay, we've been doing a lot of these and i'm telling you right now this is a decent Good total job, everybody nice work everybody out there and now the event we've all been waiting for uh, our calendar now. winners. I gotta find it. You just We're going to show patient. you the top 12 winners on our calendar. Mm, and I, gotta, I have some bad news. 
Okay. Harper and Tilly did not make it. But maybe next year. Okay, so we have. I believe that January is going to be well, Mr. We, Meeks. We don't know for sure know what for order sure they're going to go. Order. But we have Mr. Meeks, Gizmo, Winnie, Howard, Georgia, Ricky, Winston, Elliot, and Poe, Normandy, Nutmeg, and Lollipop. Yay! Look I at think the... it's rigged because Tiana, both your dogs made it, not one of mine did. Well, we'll just have to try in 2021. And I voted. We're going to put them into training dogs. and get them all set for next time next around. Next year. Yep. It, next year's their year for 2022. Yep. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there's always tomorrow. All right. There's well, always tomorrow. Oh, now we have the singing portion of our show. <laughs> to come true. You going to continue, Doris? No, I think I'll leave it. Okay. She was my favorite, yeah. though. All right. So. We hope that you've enjoyed the evening because we certainly have. And we look forward to being back in Denver soon. Although we love this hotel room here oh, yeah. in Chicagoland. Uh, but I did bring my own pillow, yeah, though. Yeah. I'm just going to be honest. I had to bring my own pillow. <laughs> Thank you all again for joining us. Uh, be safe, be kind. And uh, we're going to turn this over to Tiana and Cynthia for some final words. And then have Tommy come back to round out the evening with a, a final performance. Have a wonderful night. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Walk back to your... A bedroom or whatever safely since you're not driving. Uh, Mary, what does this mean you just sent me? Can you no, help? To take, we're taking photo, a group, big group photos. Everyone can turn on their video for a minute. Okay. okay. That's not what she sent me. Oh. I don't know if this is a new total. Oh, oh whoa, total. Whoa, 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 whoa. We have a very, very, very new total. Well, I guess, yeah, our, our total total. The big total, the final total. Timpani, please. There we go. $73,472. Can you Yay! believe it? You guys Where's rock the it. Machine I am like to be so blown away how amazing all of you are. You are like amazing. Okay, we have to make confetti. Ready? And we're working we on it. Hang on, almost, 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 almost. Ready? Just, just bear with us. Go, go, go. One, two, three. Wait, wait. Okay, one, two, three, go. It was amazing. You guys, you did such a great job tonight. I am so proud. And, and bring us back and we'll have new jokes. I promise. <laughs> I'll even sing. <laughs> yes. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Love to all. Take it away, Tiana. And okay. Well, quickly, Elise, before you go to the video, um, and then we rounded out with Tony, we would, or Tommy, we would love to do a group photo. So if everybody wants to turn on their screens, we're gonna do some screenshots. We'll share these out with everybody, but get, oh, look at that. I love it. Kylie, you guys have your animal ready. Okay, we're gonna start taking some screenshots. So everybody just keep smiling. Yay. Photo bomb. <laughs> get in here, get, get in, in here. here. You were part of this, get right in here, Brittany. Keep smiling, just keep smiling. All right, this is awesome. Okay, a couple more. All right, one more. Smile, smile. Love it. I love all those furry animals. That's amazing. Okay, so we're going to do a little round out of good night with our amazing pup Bruce. And then we'll just finish out the night with Tommy. And everybody, I hope you can stay and dance a little bit with us, grab another drink. And thank you for an incredible night with POSCO. This was absolutely more than we could have ever hoped for. Thank you all so much for being with us. You're extremely special to us. Yes. Um, you. And you are the reason that POSCO is here. So thank you and enjoy this quick little um, goodbye from Cynthia and I and Bruce and then music from Tommy for the last 20 minutes. Hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining us tonight for Wag New Sisters 2020. We know it's been quite a different event from in years past, but we are super excited you joined us and we, it's just been an amazing event. Thank you so much for your generosity. Bruce here, thanks you for your generosity and for letting him be the star of the show tonight. Uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he's leaning into me. I'm about to fall off the couch. So I'll turn it over to Tiana. Thank you so much. Yes, I'll just reiterate, thank you so much for joining us. We're so happy that you were here tonight and just appreciate all you've done over the years. Um, or if this is your first year to support POSCO and we're looking forward to seeing you next year. Um, and definitely keep Bruce in mind if you have anyone that you know that's looking for a home. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, what a great night.
for a great cause. Um, <clears throat> so cool to see all the generosity for Paws Co. helping out the animals that need it the most. Um, they can't speak to us, so it's so nice for someone to have a voice to speak for them. Um, let's have some fun, grab your drink, um, snuggle up with your pet, and I'm gonna uh, play a few more songs to, uh, to end this party right. Let's do this. Uh, let's party. Same key, that's fun.
dollars. I got to have faith. I got to have faith. Yes, I got to have faith. their first album it's like 2003 or something which is 17 years ago <laughs> uh, here we go by the killers it's called read my mind hope you like it on the corner of main street just trying to keep it in line you say you want to move on and you say i'm falling behind can you read my mind Season. 
rise when I gave the word. Now in the morning I sleep alone, sweep the streets I used to own. She packed my bags last night, free flight i 
Hope you were singing along. Uh, I got a couple minutes here. It wouldn't be an acoustic set if I didn't do Blackbird. So let's throw that one in and then uh, we'll see what happens next. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly. All your life. Again, I'm Tom Cantillon. Um, I'm going to pass this back over to the um, to the pause co-hosts and let them say their final goodbyes to you. Thanks for uh, letting me be a part of it and, and be a part of your night and, and for giving to Pause Co. Um, see you next time. All right, everybody. I just wanted to say a good night from all of us. Um, thank you for such an incredible evening. This was a blast and it was almost as good as having you all in person, but we can't wait for that to happen next year. So thank you for joining us and looking forward to a big party next year, but thanks for being part of this one and making it such a important and special evening. Um, we definitely raised enough money that in the year ahead we're going to continue to do the work that we do um, in helping the animals who need us the most and we definitely couldn't do it without all of you so thanks for joining us thanks for dancing with us and enjoy the rest of your night um, and we can't wait to see you in person very soon thank you bye friends thank you